If you've ever played Pokemon Emerald, you may have come across these buildings, but you probably didn't go inside. These are the battle tents, and their purpose is to give the player a taste of the upcoming battle frontier, a major selling point of Pokemon Emerald. While most players forgot the battle tents, I, for one, think that there could have been more done with the battle frontier's little brothers. So let's analyze the battle tents, figure out out their missed potential and propose some possible improvements. The Battle Frontier is one of the most loved parts of the Pokemon series and is something that fans are hoping will return to the series one day. What makes the Battle Frontier so special is that it gives the player the opportunity to engage in unlimited battles against a large possible pool of Pokemon, making the game fundamentally endless. The Battle Frontier is more than just more battling. It also includes different kinds of battle facilities that subvert standard gameplay into new and unique challenges. Challenges. While the Battle Frontier is accessible in the post-game, the Battle Tents become accessible between badges 2 and 4. Each tent is a miniature version of a Battle Frontier facility, where the player engages in 3 battles instead of the standard 7. The pool of Pokémon that you battle is also much smaller, only including Pokémon from the standard Hoenn Pokédex and only Pokémon of a modest power level. There are 3 Battle Tents. The first is the Factory Tent, located in Slateport City. The Factory Tent is based off the Battle Factory. In this facility, instead of using your own Pokémon, you get to choose three Pokémon out of a random pool of six. After each battle, you get the choice to switch out one of your current team members with one of the team members of your most recent opponent. If you ask me, I think there should be a version of this in the early game of every Pokémon game. The Factory Tent is an excellent way to try out new Pokémon and strategies that you wouldn't have considered before. Depending on which town you visit first, the next tent could be the Arena Tent, located in Fall Arbor Town. Unlike the previous tent, in this tent you use your own Pokémon. There are two main differences between these battles and normal battles. The first difference is that you can't switch your Pokémon, and the order in which your Pokémon are sent out is fixed, meaning if your first Pokémon goes down, the second is immediately sent out, instead of a choice between the second and third. The other big difference in this kind of battle is that after three turns have passed, if no Pokémon has been knocked out, a judging will occur. Pokémon are judged by three criteria. Mind, meaning how many offensive moves it used, body, its remaining HP, and skill, how many moves it actually landed. The loser of this judging will be knocked out, regardless of its remaining HP. If it's a tie, both Pokémon are knocked out. This sort of battle doesn't succeed in subverting regular battles very well. In fact, it actively makes battles more straightforward and less interesting. From not being allowed to switch and being disincentivized from using strategy moves because of the judging, your best bet for success here is standard brute force. But if you thought this battle facility takes away strategizing, just wait till you see the next one. The Verdant Turf Battle Tent is based on the Battle Palace. The main gimmick here is that you don't get to choose which attacks your Pokémon uses. Instead, your Pokémon chooses one of their own moves to use from the moves that they have. At first glance, this seems like a terrible idea for a battle facility. It's actually not too much of a disaster gameplay-wise. I'd say its biggest crime as a game mechanic is just that it's kind of boring. Any standard Pokémon team with decent attacking moves is going to find success here, and you as the player aren't going to feel like you did much to earn it. Unlike the previous battle tent we talked about, you can at least choose to switch out your Pokémon, but that's the only strategizing you can actually do. The choice of attacks the Pokémon makes is actually not completely random. It is decided in part by that Pokémon's nature, with some natures wanting to be more offensive and others trying to be more strategic. While this is a cool concept, did Game Freak really expect anyone to go out of their way to look for certain natures just for this? For the post-game version of the Battle Palace that grants a major game achievement for completion, I can understand figuring out all this nature stuff. But for a mid-game optional challenge with an extremely minor prize? Come on, who will go through all that trouble? So those are the three Battle Tents. Now that we know what they are, what's wrong with them? So. 
Of the three battle facilities, I think most players found themselves engaging with the factory tent at least once while completely ignoring the arena and palace tents. The battle factory was a perfect choice for the first battle tent, and I wouldn't change that at all. However, the arena and palace tents just aren't the most interesting subversions of the standard battle system. The arena tent is alright, but honestly it could have just been replaced with the standard battle tower, and that would have been better. The palace tent is even worse, as not choosing your Pokemon's attacks is just a fundamentally flawed way to play the game. I think the Verdant Turf battle tent should have instead included a smaller version of a more interesting battle facility. My vote would be the Battle Pike, a battle facility that sets the player against separate pathways. Some heal your team, some inflict status conditions, some make you battle trainers, and some even make you fight wild Pokemon. No, you can't catch them. A miniature version of the Battle Pike Pike would have gotten players super excited to get to the battle frontier later in the game. This flaw also only applies to the arena and palace tents since you use your own Pokemon. In these battle tents, the opposing trainer's Pokemon will either be the same level as your highest level Pokemon, or they will be level 30 if your highest level Pokemon is level 30 or less. This was an extremely poor design choice because it makes it so the player functionally can't engage with the battle tent until their Pokemon are level 30. When the player reaches the battle tent for the first time, their Pokemon will be hovering around around level 20 at best. This means that you'll have to backtrack to these locations in order to properly play them. And since it goes off your highest leveled team member, you have to make sure all three Pokemon on your team are the same level. So if you have one Pokemon of even a slightly higher level, you wouldn't want to use it as it would bring down the rest of your team. I'm not sure if Gen 3 just didn't have the technology to change your Pokemon's level for certain battle facilities. In Generation 4, or onward, Pokemon are automatically moved to level 50 for battle facilities. So it may be possible that with the GBA's technology, they just couldn't control the level cap. Even if that were true, I just don't understand why they didn't make the lowest level 20 instead of 30, so that players can try these battle facilities when they actually reach them for the first time. The biggest flaw of the battle tents is they give the player little reward for completing them. In the battle frontier, completing enough battles earns you BP, a currency that can be used in the battle frontier only for exclusive items and move tutor move. BP is also flawed as a reward because you need to do an unarseously amount of battles in order to actually buy anything with it, but in concept it is a good reward system. Beyond BP, you also get medals for defeating each battle facility bosses, with getting all seven gold medals being one of the highest honors in Pokemon. What are the battle tents rewards? One full heal for the factory tent, one hyper potion for the arena tent, and one nest ball for the palace tent. Sure, these rewards only take three battles to get, but come on, who is playing these battles just for the prizes? Status condition healing items aren't exactly hard to come by, and grinding out even three full heals would be a massive waste of time. The Hyper Potion might be the best reward of the bunch since you'd be getting a powerful healing item earlier in the game than you would normally receive one. However, at this point, it would just be a waste to use an item that heals 200 HP, as none of your Pokemon are going to have health that high. By the time a Hyper Potion would actually be necessary in the game, you'd already be able to buy them, and you'd already have enough money to buy as many as you need. And then there's the Nest Ball. Not a bad item, but definitely not something I would see as a prize for achieving something you had to go so out of your way for. The main issue with all three of these prizes is that they are disposable and can be purchased from regular shops. They get one use, maybe, and then are forgotten. The prize doesn't stick with you as a player. It doesn't remind you of the experience you went through to get it. They just blend in with the other items you have in your bag. This could have been marginally improved by making it so you could get five of each disposable item instead of just one, but I think we deserve even better than that. Back in my video on Johto's bug catching contest, which if you haven't seen it, you should, link in the description. I also thought that the prizes were underwhelming. However, I still think that the bug catching contest succeeded because the prize was not the item it gave you, but the Pokemon you captured. The Battle Tents should have taken a similar approach by rewarding players with Pokemon. Pokemon Emerald put the last of the Generation 2 Pokemon 
Pokemon on the GBA, making it possible to complete the Pokedex only using GBA games. Some of these final Gen 2 Pokemon, like Mareep, Shuckle, and Houndour, should have been prizes for the Battle Tents. This would have motivated players to actually play the Battle Tents and then would give them something that they can always remember that experience with. Every time you used any of these prize Pokemon in the game, you would remember how you got it. I think the biggest problem with the Battle Tents is that they were an afterthought by the developers, who didn't realize the potential they had in what they were creating. Having a battle facility based around being earlier in the game can actually be really interesting if implemented correctly. Unfortunately, the Battle Tents' flaws doomed them to obscurity. I'd still encourage you to revisit Emerald and play the Factory Tent. It really is its own unique experience. It's basically the Battle Factory, but at the strength level of the early to mid game. I think it's actually pretty underrated. It's not difficult by any means, but interesting. Once you've conquered dragons and champions, you can drop on by and remember what it was like to use attacks like Harden and Bide. But what do you think of the Battle Tents? Did you play them? Do you think there's more they could have done? Let me know in the comments below. Hey, if you like this Pokemon video, check out this other Pokemon video right here. If you like what I do and want to see me do more of it, consider becoming a channel member or checking out my Patreon. Link in the description. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time.